dark, cold world out there. There's a time to live and a time for a man to die. There are places for dead men in the earth and the sky. Don't you venture too far now, cause you can't come back. From the place where the good guys always dress in black. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Video Bros Network and you're here with Bobby Munson, and as always, the man with the angelic voice, the man beside me. You see him right there. He's Papa Smokes. How the hell are you doing, sir? I'm doing great, Munson. And how are all my wrestling people doing out there? Hopefully everybody's having a good old time, staying safe, staying healthy, and get looking forward to maybe some live action wrestling coming up again here in the near future. Things are starting to look positive, Papa Smokes. Uh, we've seen a little bit of it from some companies, and we got some Stuff going down tonight to talk to you right about on Ring Respect Radio, which also entails fans in arenas. Again, big stuff to talk about there. But before we do, we want everybody to go ahead and click the subscribe button down below. Turn on the notification bell so you know anytime we release new material right here on the Video Bros Network with your favorite podcast, Ring Respect Radio. And also go check out our friends at Backbreaker Media out of Alberta. They've done a lot of great things for us. They, our show is available on Backbreaker Media's YouTube channel as well as on other outlets, including Podbean and stuff like that as well. And also through the Canadian Wrestling Network as well. So Ring Respect Radio is starting to grow, get a little bit of popularity. Apparently people aren't sick of us yet, Papa Smokes, but let's, uh, let's give them more of the good stuff here on Ring Respect tonight. We're talking about our favorite little program, MLW, Major League Wrestling. We're talking about Fusion. We've been having fun doing these reviews, these recaps, and then we're down to episode 129 here, Papa Smokes. And we're doing the big main event of Buku Dao versus TJP. It's set to go down on episode 129. And that's how we start off is with a video recap of what led us to Buku Dao and TJP. Uh, great way to start this off. As always, MLW likes to do these video packages. They're well produced, well put <laughs> together, I find. It really gets you into the story in case you're a, a casual viewer or someone who hasn't tuned in for a while. You can get caught up properly with what the program is. And get set for that main event. Great job on the part of MLW with these. Yeah, they're always on point with the uh, video packages. And uh, as we've seen from some of Court Bauer's business dealings lately, we've got new TV deals. We're going to have a whole bunch of new fans watching the product. So obviously these little video package recaps are pretty important at this time. You bet they are, man. So we're going to kick this night off with some good wrestling, though. We got Gino Medina taking on Rocky Romero. Rocky Romero uh, recently uh, coming back from New Japan Pro Wrestling and making some appearances on MLW television. Uh, he taking on Gino Medina here. And this one, I think, in terms of a matchup, was a lot better than what we got to see in last week's programming outside of the main event. This was a much better startup matchup uh, featuring Gino Medina, I think, Rocky Romero fits the mold of what Gino Medina does inside the ring. And I think the two were very capable. Uh, they started off nice and slow with some grapples, some headlocks, uh, quite a few uh, reversals, some good back and forth mat wrestling and stuff like that. Uh, a great mixture here and what ended up being a pretty enjoyable, fun matchup to watch. Yeah. Yeah. I also like this as, as an opening match, this did the trick just beautifully. Uh, like you say, good uh, mat grappling at the beginning Medina looks like he's uh, every bit able to uh, keep up with a technical expert like Rocky Romero. It kind of uh, had that feeling of like a teacher and a student in it almost, although I'm not sure these guys actually know each other, but a veteran and a newcomer kind of thing. Um, I also like Medina. Um, nowadays call it storytelling, but he, uh, he has that... Uh, arrogant bad attitude kind of and he lets that show through at some points in the match uh, especially when Romero gets one up on him and then Medina has that moment of uh, jealousy and rage and he takes it out on his opponent it's nice it, it builds his uh, character so to speak and uh, uh, builds a tension within the match and uh, yeah Medina eating another loss here a little bit surprising on a guy I thought they were giving a be hard push to, but uh, this is two back-to-back -back losses two weeks in a row. And uh, what do you think about this uh, booking for Gino Medina? 
I, I was shocked to say the least. I thought that he was going to pick up the win in this one. I, I did like how the ending happened. I like Rocky Romero putting that arm bar on and uh, getting the tap out win the way he did. I think the only thing you can really do at this point with this, especially if you want to uh, end up pushing Gino Medina, I feel is to, okay, you've got him on a couple of losses. Maybe you get him a little bit frustrated next time he takes a disqualification loss or something like that, because he's kind of losing his cool. He doesn't like the fact that he continues to be on the streak and then have him go on a badass win streak after that, get more aggressive inside that ring, get more violent with his opponents and just start kicking the shit out of them. And I think by that way, you'll build him up as this guy. It's like he, enough is enough. He snapped, he gets angry, and he starts getting business done in the ring. And I think you could really make something with Gino Medina that way. Yeah, that's an interesting thought too. And I, I was uh, thinking uh, along the terms of he might need a uh, some kind of a partner or a manager or a faction of some kind which could help him out or else – perhaps some sort of a physical gimmick, something that he brings to the ring that becomes involved in the action at some point and helps him get some wins. Uh, I'm not sure uh, which way they'll go with this, but I, I think you're right that they'll uh, have him go on a, a little bit of a losing streak that gets him angry and then he'll start piling up the wins. Yeah. And I, uh, Hey, I'm all for the manager idea. In fact, you know what, Gino Medina, give Bobby a call. I'm uh, available for uh, bookings anytime. Just uh Anytime you want, man, give me a shout. I'm there. I'm in your corner. We'll get those wins for you. Uh, from there, uh, the match finished up, and we went backstage. We got Richard Holiday uh, being interviewed by Alicia Toot. Um, kind of a comical little uh, angle here, and one that I think I can accept. This yeah. little bit of comedy is acceptable. Yeah. Um, Richard Holiday kind of playing face now. He even kind of mentions that he now likes the consumers. The consumers are good. You know, he's all on the side. We kind of talked on the last episode of Ring Respect about is he face, is he heel? I guess we now know. And then he unveils this poster <laughs> and this gigantic hammer coming out the front of the poster. And Alicia Toot making the very clear point that it looks like a hammer dick. <laughs> this this was golden, Bob Smokes. Yeah, I like this part too. It just the performers having a little bit of fun. Who knows where this joke came from? Because I, I think that poster, the picture on that poster has been a T-shirt of Hammerstones for some time now. But uh, anyway, the joke was there. They took it. Uh, I, I also had a little tickle at that one, too. And uh, good stuff between the two. Uh, maybe maybe a Holiday and a two are getting so close that uh, they can share some jokes together. Who knows? Yeah, it was, a, it was a great little angle. A lot of fun. Again, this is, again, that uh, oblivious kind of comedy that's in there like that, I think can be fun as long as it's not overdone. They don't do too much of it. This made it great because it was fun to break it up a little bit and have some fun. Richard Holiday, I think, is a guy that can pull it off in a way that I find enjoyable. I think that his face turn might be the best thing for him right now and maybe for the company too. Yeah, yeah. And we've speculated before about what's happening with the faction dynasty because uh, – they were a clear heel faction before COVID shut down with uh, Hammerstone, Holiday, and MJF. And then they had Gino Medina for a short time. But uh, since the restart, uh, Hammerstone has been pretty clearly uh, babyface. And uh, Holiday leaning that way too. Hammerstone and Holiday don't ever seem to do anything together now either. They, they once in a while have a promo together, but they don't have tag matches and they don't accompany each other to the ring for each other's matches or anything like that. So it's still my prediction that uh, the faction dynasty will go by the wayside at some point, but uh, uh, it remains to be seen what goes on with Richard Holiday. You bet. We'll find out soon enough. I'm sure uh, from there, Los Parks cutting one hell of a promo. I really like this, especially from LA park, man. He killed it on this thing. Talking about Selena De La Renta, her bad decisions about how she is the one that's causing the losses lately. She's the one behind it all and how she is disrespecting him, disrespecting the real family, disrespect the El Jefe. Man, this was a great promo, Pop Smokes. I, I just love this one. I love the ones where Los Parks are uh, in the gym and speaking Spanish and all that. It, uh, I, that's part of that international flavor we've talked about. I, I like to hear a little 
Espanol once in a while, and uh, the, the boys tell it straight the way it is. Dad and his two sons, uh, familia, very close, and uh, they're not going to let anyone screw with their business. And uh, if they don't think Selena's towing the line long enough, then she's not going to be a part of that tag team title reign. And uh, you can see that the pressure is building underneath Selena De La Renta in this episode. And uh, we'll have to see what uh, happens between her and Azteca Underground and El Jefe in uh, the next couple of, uh, of uh, editions. You bet we will. So uh, from there, we did have our PWI top 10 list. It's been a while since we had the official top 10 in the World Heavyweight Championship run. So we're going to read these off and a few new names definitely on the list here, starting at number 10, ACH breaking the list this time. Uh, He's had some uh, great success here in MLW. haven't seen him in a couple weeks, but he's definitely been keeping up with his uh, feud with the uh, Violence is Forever crew, uh, as well as his partnership with the Bon Eric. So again, ACH been a big part of MLW, breaking the list. Uh, Kelvin Tankman making it in at number nine after that great showing at Never Say Never. And previous to that is undefeated streak. So Kelvin Tankman in there at number nine. Uh, Myron Reed making it up to number eight. So the former middleweight champion. Uh, climbing up the list in the uh, rankings for singles competition in the heavyweight division. And then our boy, Mil Mortez, he made it to number seven. The lost Hammerstone might have knocked him down a couple places, but still staying strong in that list. Uh, man, we haven't seen it in a little while. Low key, probably haven't seen him since Filthy Island making it at number six. Uh, a bit of a fall from grace when he was uh, sitting in around number three and two there for quite a while throughout the uh, earlier parts of the year. But yeah, low key, haven't seen him in a while. He's pushed back a bit. Uh, Richard Holiday, though, has made it jump up this list quite far. Number five for Richard Holiday, good for him. And then uh, number four, surprisingly, I got to say, Mods Kruger, which we haven't seen in quite some time. Yes, he's undefeated. He's a monster. We've seen great things. But man, number four, I was kind of shocked he jumped up that high, especially with the absence of Mods Kruger on television lately. Uh, no surprise to me, though, Leo Rush actually making the list despite the lack of size he has in terms of the heavyweight championship bout. Leo Rush has been phenomenal in that ring and on the microphone week to week with MLW. So, of course, PWI ranking him up that list, number three. Uh, Of course, number two, sitting strong, filthy Tom Lawler, no debates there. Number one, your boy Hammer. And as always, Fatu, the champ. Again, can't debate those. A couple of little surprises in there, but again, not much to really uh, debate too hard on this list here, Pop Smokes. Yeah, and uh, every week I, I look at this uh, PWI Top 10, and I think it gives us a little hint as to the booking to come sometimes. Uh, yeah, I, I At least I think that uh, when you watch somebody moving up the rankings a little bit, it's kind of akin to a, a push in the company, or uh, same thing the other way, sliding down. Uh, they're, they're, somebody's had their little run, they're not going to use them until... Uh, you know, until the near future a little bit. But I, I like these rankings, just like the old days in the magazines. You get to see who's coming up and who's going down. And it's quite interesting that you say about uh, predicting some of the upcoming booking, because Court Bauer actually recently stated that if you pay close enough attention to the episodes of MLW Fusion, that there are a lot of hints within the episodes to things that have yet to be revealed on MLW and might not even be revealed until the new season. So it almost makes you curious enough to go back and re-watch episodes of MLW Fusion to see if you can now find these apparent Easter eggs in the episodes that Court Bauer is mentioning. Once again, making for another great reason to tune into MLW Fusion, Court Bauer just delivering the goods week to week here. Yeah, yeah, I... I thought the same thing about when he uh, mentioned about the Easter eggs. It made me want to watch some of that stuff over again, but uh, in a way I'd rather, uh, I I don't like predicting uh, wrestling stuff in the future that much. I'd rather just see it unfold the way the booker has it in their imagination. And, uh, and uh, uh, all will be revealed if you just keep watching the show. You bet it will. And we were just talking about him, uh, Leo Rush. Uh, we come back from that PWI Top 10, Leo Rush backstage with Alicia Toot talking more about the inevitable Rush versus Reed 2 clash that's going to be coming up. I'm probably going to hear more about this on this episode of MLW Fusion even. But Leo uh, looking great, standing great as a champion, as always. Great banter that he has anytime back there with Alicia Toot as well. Um, Leo's been fantastic. And the build for Leo and Rush 2, it works. I'm excited for it. I want to see it, Bob Smokes. I have 
big match feel on this without it being a couple of big guys going into it. Yeah, yeah. Th this is just a great matchup. And I kind of had the feeling before Rash even got to MLW that him and Meyer and Reed might have had some history or they might know each other or something. This this match seemed to be one that was uh, in the books uh, even before Rush got there. So it's obviously a nice matchup on paper. It's a good matchup in person as well. These two uh, 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 complement each other's styles beautifully. And uh, yeah, as we've already seen, they can have a great match together. I look forward to this. Uh, I'd like to see Myron get his belt back, but uh, frankly, Rush has looked so undefeatable lately that uh, I'm, yeah, I'm honestly not sure what's going to happen. So I'll have my eyes glued to the screen for that one. Yeah, excited to find out. And we know that's uh, hopefully going to be coming up very soon. We'll talk about that shortly. Uh, from there, we go up to our next match, second match of the night. And this one, a very short-lived match. We haven't seen him since his uh, matchup at Dirt Filthy Island. But King Mo returning to MLW Fusion. And he absolutely mauled Robert Martyr, which could be expected in this lockup here. Man, King Mo looks fantastic. I like this guy. Yeah, he does. Um, we all know of his reputation in uh, Bellator and, and other fighting companies. Uh, we know that he's a shooter. We know that he can uh, turn an average guy or average wrestler inside out. Some of those, a uh, couple of those throws he did in this very short one minute match were devastating. Hey, you know, I also want to give a shout out to Robert Martyr in this match. I, I know that, uh, you and I like Zenshi as preliminary talent a whole bunch, but check out Robert Martyr and the selling on this guy. He's got it down to a science uh, that even in this short match, some of the bumps he took, the selling he did, the facial expressions he did, and when uh, King Mo locked him up in that uh, cravat-style choke uh, submission hold, Martyr looked awesome. Like his, his legs looked so rubbery. He had the one planted. The other one was on its heel. Like it looked very awkward. A, a guy could just stand there and, and pretend to be getting choked out, but uh, Martyr taking it to another level. Like he really knows how to sell. This is the job guy of the year, in my opinion, maybe except for Zenshi, but uh, I liked this performance. Uh, once in a while, you have to hand it to the, uh, the prelim talent, uh, th this guy's really got it going on. I also, uh, Munson, I don't know if we talked about it before, but follow Robert Martyr on Twitter. He's a, he's a good follow. He's a student of the game. He posts lots of old matches and old pictures, and like you can tell he's studying the history of uh, professional wrestling a whole lot. I, I respect this guy for that. Yeah, I mean, I, I love his selling too. I mean, it's believable when he's out there. He's not trying to do too much he's not trying to you know make his opponent look bad in any way he sells the hell out of it like you mentioned i mean like even like yeah like you said on the rubbery legs that really sold it for me he looked like his body had gone completely limp which it should from a choke and you felt <clears throat> sympathy for the guy and you should feel sympathy when a guy gets the shit kicked out of him by a badass heel like king mo and that's what is so effective not only about king mo as a heel but about robert martyr as a prelim talent like you say and working like he does. I mean, yeah, I, I like that you brought this up, Papa Smokes. He deserves that shout out. And, you know, let's let's put the big shout out here right now. You know what? I'm going to go on record and say it. Robert Martyr, great prelim talent. Maybe nobody's asked you this before, but Robert Martyr, we're going to tag you in this thing right now. And we're asking you to join us on Ring Respect Radio. We want to interview Robert Martyr and have you come and talk about some old school wrestling and have fun with the video, bro. So pop smokes. We're going to get everybody's help. And we're going to reach out to Robert Martyr and we're going to get him to join us right here on ring respect radio sometime soon. Hell yeah. I love it. That's a great idea months. And I'm glad I thought of it. Yeah. And I'm, I hope that this works out. We'll, we'll tag him. We'll reach out to the guy and, and see if he's got some extra time. That would right. be excellent. I love the idea, man. And speaking of excellent tape, hey, big news. Uh, we talked about it on the last show, but we know a little bit more now. MLW heading to Vice TV. And from the information we have so far, Kurt Bauer mentioning that there's going to be two phases to the rollout of Vice TV. Uh, as we're recording this on April 28th, Vice TV MLW partnership begins this Saturday. Uh, to anybody who's going to be tuning in for the first time on there, you're going to get to be watching recapped matches, great moments from LMLW so that you can get caught up to speed to where everything is. 
Uh, you can also go check it all out on YouTube if you choose to. But in the meantime, tune into Vice TV. Make it work over there. Everybody who has Vice TV, make sure that MLW is heard about and the ratings go up. We want to see that great stuff happen. And because there is some other t- stuff to talk about coming up, we won't say too much. But Phase 2 sounds like it, it's going to be happening eventually with some sort of new programming possibly and new matchups live action something is in the works court bowers always got something and a great surprise will be had and great things for anybody tuning in on vice tv so great news for wrestling fans great news for mlw and kudos to court bauer once again for the great work getting this deal made yeah and and what a relief for the wrestling fans. Finally, a light at the end of the tunnel. Crowds back in wrestling again somewhere, at least. I have the feeling it might take a bit longer in Canada, but at whatever. As long as uh, we're moving in that direction, I'm happy. Me too, man. And speaking of that, we might as well get into it now. I mean, the next thing up on the show was Court Bauer making an appearance. And they stated quite clearly that when Court Bauer makes an appearance, it's going to be a big deal. And we know this because Court Bauer is not a personality that comes out week to week. They don't often bring him up week to week. I mean, we know of him. Everybody's aware he is the, the, the head honcho at MLW, but they don't turn it into a big thing. His big announcement is going to have big stakes on it, but it's not going to interfere with you know, the day-to-day programming or any storylines, none of that bullshit that you get from the other guys. There's no effect to that matter. He's on there in an interview with Alicia too, and a big announcement. MLW Fusion is coming to a season end in May, May 5th. We are going to get Rush versus Reed 2. We talked about it through the night. That is going to headline the May 5th episode of MLW Fusion and bring MLW Fusion to a season close. What they're doing, Gord Bauer wants the wrestlers to rest up, get better, stay healthy, and be prepared because as of July 10th, the big announcement, fans back in the arenas, MLW 2300, Philadelphia. The thing is almost sold out, Papa Smokes. July 10th, it is the season opener. MLW getting back with the fans. Fuck yeah, man. Yeah, couldn't be happier. And uh, what a great... uh, I really like uh, Bauer's business model about this too. I'm not sure how good of business it is, but I like the idea that he has uh, a season ending and then a break before the next one. This is kind of like almost unheard of in professional wrestling and... Just like you were recapping there, he wants the wrestlers to get rested, to get healthy, to get uh, feeling good in their mental state and everything ready for a brand new season. I think this is a good thing because we've all uh, we've all seen the wrestling biographies and such about uh, the the stars that work uh, 365 days a year with the traveling and all the rest of it nagging injuries that never heal uh, uh, mental health stress and all the rest of it it's nice if those guys the the boys in wrestling can get a a, a little bit of time off uh, get an off season so to speak and uh, I think that's only uh, uh, going to contribute to the health and happiness of the uh, the talent in MLW and uh, I, I, I love this idea the guys can go and uh, uh, decompress and uh, defuse a little bit and then just relax, spend some time with their family, do their workouts, do their, get their surgeries, get whatever they need to do to uh, get ready for this new season. I think it'll be like a breath of fresh air. Our, our, our favorite wrestlers will all be ready to go by the, by uh, the end of this uh, off season and the start of the new season. Yeah, and it looks like everybody's on board from what we've been talking about. Uh, all the top names in MLW uh, were revealed on the poster for this show. Uh, this is going to be big. I think there's going to be big matchups. Uh, Core Barrick said expect championship matchups to be held. And I believe that, you know, we're going to see the inevitable Alexander Hammerstone Jacob fought two match on this. This would be my prediction right now if I was going to make any prediction. I think that match has been building to this kind of opening of a season maybe or maybe they'll save it for another big event i just i really feel that's the way they're going it would be a great way to kick it back off but we'll wait and see how it pans out either way we got cut off right at the end of court bowers uh talk here he had, all of a sudden just joseph samuel cutting in taking over control of the show cutting one hell of a promo as always and this time directed at the boss he's going at court bauer telling him to watch out for july 10th and that he's got plans. He's got things in the works. He's got guys in training. I, I think we're going to see a lot of Contra and a lot of new things revealed from Yosef Samael come July the 10th. 
Yeah, I, I also love this promo. Uh, Sam Ailes promos are all really good. This was a particularly good one. Uh, saying chaos is a ladder, like the guy's just yeah. excellent with the language and, and imagery and such. Uh, and I think that uh, Joseph Samuel, as as kind of the leader of of Contra, doesn't like to have uh, his guys' matches dictated to him and. I think it's smart that Court Bauer, uh, as a booker, has kept this big match in his back pocket for a special occasions, uh, this Hammerstone versus Fatu. But here we have Joseph Samael saying, hey, I control Fatu. You guys get Fatu when I tell you you get Fatu. So, had, again, more intrigue, more uh, uncertainty thrown into this. Uh, uh, everyone's assuming that we will get this big match when they debut on Vice TV, but uh, Sam Ail just throwing it into a little bit of uncertainty here and there too, uh, so that the fan isn't completely sure how this is going to happen or or there might be some extenuating circumstances to this match. Just builds the tension, builds the suspense, and uh, leaves, the, leaves the viewer wanting more. Yeah, yeah, and they've done such a great job, man. I'm looking forward to what they have in store for July the 10th. It'll be nice to have a short little break. Not that we haven't loved watching the show and haven't loved doing this, uh, you know, review and recap all the time. But man, sometimes you got to hit that pause button. Uh, you and I have discussed it. We want to be able to move on to a couple other things that we've had on the back burner here on Ring Respect for a while. Uh, big things that we have in store as well, too. So it'd be nice to take that break. Uh, you know, we've also got some big things that we can't even talk about yet that you and I need to sit down and have some plans over. Uh, coming up this summer, yeah. hopefully, um, you know, just lots going on. So it'd be nice to have that little bit of a break before we get back into doing our recap and reviews. And come July 10th, man, I think we're going to be ready to rock and roll with some new MLW. It's going to be fantastic. And hopefully everybody tunes in, make this shit work. We want to see this go really well. These guys deserve it. Up next, man, we had Marshall Von Air cutting a promo. It looks like he is being cleared possibly for a matchup next week on MLW Fusion to take on filthy Tom Lawler. He's really laying into Tom Lawler. A lot of history built up here. It's his Tom Lawler's boys that put him on the injury list. I honestly thought this guy was going to be out for a while. Yeah, I I think his doctors have probably suggested that he is. We saw him on crutches uh, in this episode, and uh, if he's one week out for a match and he can't put weight on that knee, I guess uh, – I think he's going to go in hurt. And uh, I think this is a, a, could be a vast detriment to uh, Marshall Von Eric. We've talked about his hot temper. He's always ready for a fight. He's very proud. Um, he doesn't take any crap from, from anybody. And I think he's going in over his head in this match. I mean, you have a, you have a hurt body part and you're going to accept a match against filthy Tom Lawler. I mean, that could be an extremely bad idea well, you, you and we'll it. just see how this goes. We'll see if, if his anger and intensity can carry him through this match. Yeah. You got to imagine Tom Lawler is going to focus on that knee and this guy, his mat, his mat wrestling, his MMA training background, you know that he knows a thousand ways to do damage to that knee and he is going to focus on it. It is going to be a rough match to watch, but again, going to love watching it because these are two guys are really enjoy, and I think that they're going to give their all inside that ring. Uh, Mark, Marshall ain't going to go down without a big fight. He's going to go down with a lot of heart, if nothing else, but man, we're going to get a fight. From there, we had the big matchup of the evening, Buku Dow versus TJP. They've been building to this one for weeks, Papa Smokes. A uh, bit, bit of a uh, recap at the top of the hour where they showed how this one uh, all got started, how it got to this point. Here we have it finally, Buku Dao versus TJP. Uh, we were excited based on everything we had seen leading up to it. Papa Smokes, how did you feel about this one and its execution? Okay, I like this. I also like the build up to this match, the idea of uh, Buku Dao being the... Uh, the trainee of TJP uh, and looking up to him and, uh, and when their uh, tag team faltered a little bit and uh, Buku Dao took a couple of pinfall losses. Uh, uh, TJ Perkins had had it with, with his uh, understudy and uh, yeah, it was just basically uh, derisive towards him, uh, giving him a slap, pushing him to the ground in this kind of uh, bullying angle. 
which I must say, just as an aside, is much more convincing than the other wrestling bullying angle, which I heard lately, which was <laughs> the, uh, the uh, six foot nine, 350 pound guy saying he was getting bullied by the uh, much older and much smaller man that was his opponent. I'm not going to get into it, but that was just completely unbelievable as a bullying angle. This one works for me because Buku is so small in his uh, height and stature and TJP's got all kinds of jokes about him and about how small he is. And he's uh, can't ride any of the rides at the carnival because he's too small, et cetera, et cetera. This had uh, the feeling of a real life conflict, which as we've said in wrestling storytelling is always the most um, captivating kind of way to, to get it across. And, this did look like an actual case of, of somebody just being an asshole to the other guy and uh, pushing him around, pushing his weight around. And uh, he, he, I, I felt it uh, inside myself, just wanting to pull for Buku Dao as the smaller guy, as the scrappy little underdog. We've seen that he's got some skill. We've seen he's got some muscle from the weight room and stuff, despite a small stature. And uh, you just had to get behind this guy and pull for him. Yeah, I agree with you. And I, I like how this one went down. It was executed nicely. Obviously, the two guys know each other so well that they were able to pull off some great uh, in-ring maneuvers, in-ring wrestling, a lot of great, especially for two smaller guys to not instantly jump into the high-flying and quick, fast pace. There actually was some grappling, some wrestling, some nice maneuvers inside that ring, some submission holds that we saw between these two guys. I mean, yeah, there was some high spots eventually in the match, but they progressed to it. It was a nice progression to get there. Uh, this was done beautifully. Man, they were given a lot of time compared to other MLW matches as well, too. I mean, this one was given a full almost 14 minutes. And I know there's probably people who don't yeah. tune into MLW might laugh at that and go, wow, well, fuck, they do more than that on every single match on some of the other companies. Well, that's not what they do in MLW. And we've stated before that you don't need to go 20 25 30 minutes in a matchup that you know sometimes seven to ten minutes is absolutely perfect but this one felt like it was worthy of going the 13 and a half minutes it went um and man we said it buku dow looking like they're doing a push for him and you couldn't agree more when you see him beat tjp like this uh ended up getting that big win in the end really sold that kind of that baby face that overcame the the heel character this guy that's been bullying him finally got his comeuffins and gets that big win man it, it was fun it was exciting well paced buku dao looking great especially again for a small guy he looks pretty solid in there yeah yeah you could tell that uh, tjp was completely leading this match calling it uh, along the way um um as, as a mentor would to his understudy kind of thing but uh um, it looked good. Uh, Dow still needs a little bit more uh, experience in the ring to get completely fluid, but uh, this was a good match. It, and uh, I also got to say, I, I'm not a huge fan of TJ Perkins, but damn, he's a fine wrestler. And he showed that in this, his uh, mat grappling and technical wrestling was just spot on. It was just absolutely uh, perfect and crisp the entire time. Uh, I remember watching uh, Perkins work but before I knew who he was. He used to be suicide in TNA. If you remember that yeah, uh, sure do. the guy with the kind of skull mask and uh, yeah, I always remember that he, he was good then, uh, but, you know, that was almost 15 years ago and he's good now. And uh, this match was excellent. And uh, I kind of have the feeling or I had the feeling watching this, that perhaps this feud might not go any longer than this. I, I, I have the feeling that they kind of set it up as bringing a new guy in. He's TJP's student. Um, so Dow is going to have a few matches with TJP as his partner and such. Then the split happens. And then I think I have the feeling they're just going to launch uh, Buku Dow on his own now uh, without TJP uh, feuding or, or anything like that. I, I, uh, not sure how it's going to go, but I have the feeling that th this is the launching point for a uh, Buku Dao. You're on your own now, kid, and you did good. Yeah, I think they 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 see the potential in him. They know that they've got a young star that they can work to their style and everything like that, make him a star in MLW and create their own 
uh, big names and stuff like that. I think they feel they have that in Buku Dow and they're going to take that opportunity to build him in that way. I think, and it starts right here and we'll see more from him coming up soon and coming up weeks. And uh, we'll be able to talk much more about Buku Dow coming up. Uh, so big, great win for him here tonight. And then just when you think the night's over, because this M- episode of MLW Fusion been running quite long, we just about forgot that Alexander Hammerstone had the big dynasty announcement that he's been preaching that ended up having nothing to do with the dynasty whatsoever, Papa Smokes. They had this one dressed up like a big yeah. media event in the back, big announcement to come. And yeah. all he had to say was, I'm tired of two singles champions in this company fought to its time. And that was about it. That was the gist of the entire promo right there. Yeah. Yeah. It was kind of a funny looking uh, press conference too, with just a couple of little cell phones being held up <laughs> in front of the camera sort of thing, whatever you, you do, what you got to do. And uh, yeah, this, this announcement was a little bit underwhelming. I wonder if they had something else in mind that didn't really turn out. Who knows, but just still, it's uh, laying the groundwork for this big match they've got in their back pocket. Uh, Alexander Hammerstone versus Jacob Faw, too, for the MLW World Heavyweight Championship. And uh, uh, like we've said in the past, all through shutdown, that this match seemed to just gain traction in the fans' imaginations. I, I don't think the company was talking about it that much. I think uh, with a lack of... Uh, good wrestling on TV. The fans were just coming up with their dream matches and uh, talking about it lots online. And like we, we've also said Hammerstone was one of the only wrestlers that, that being inactive during the COVID shutdown of last year kind of gained momentum and gained traction. He was more of a rule breaker or a heel before uh, the shutdown. And then he, he started to get so popular in the fans of uh, minds that he, he kind of just turned baby face uh you know naturally through the through the imaginations of the fans so this has just had a nice organic natural build to it this match and uh yeah i i love it that they you know like we've talked about hot shot booking before too a lot of companies would have just stuck this match on the very next week and uh Mm -hmm. you see what happens kind of thing and i just i don't believe that's the correct way to do it uh they they've got the slow burn they're not teasing it too much, but a little bit. And we all know this match is in the future. We know that Samael is going to try and get Fatu out of this match because he's he's worried about the championship staying in contra. There's all kinds of angles to look at this match from, and I just it all builds to attention. Uh, I can't wait to see it. Yeah, it's been built fantastically. Great stuff. I mean, again, the uh, press conference looked a little tacky, but, uh, you know, once they get back to being able to do these things more <laughs> proper with people around and stuff like that, have some actual For people sure. being news reporters, it's going to look a hell of a lot better. I think the idea behind it, they wanted it to look kind of like a UFC type uh, media event kind of thing. And that's the way it was kind of promoted. Again, I think you might be onto something where they had an idea. It didn't work out. That's why maybe this got bumped to the end of the show and ended up being more Hammerstone, just cutting a promo saying he wants that title. It's time. And just teasing us a bit more. But talking about him turning babyface over COVID and stuff like that once it came back. I mean, it just fits Hammerstone so well. He naturally can pull off being a babyface because he's a a rock star. He looks like an ass kicker that goes out there. He's got the rock star hair. He comes out to Queens of the Stone Age based music. I mean, he's that guy you want to go out, have a beer with and go have a good old time with. He's Hammerstone. He's your boy Hammer. It works. He's a guy who can move probably move a hell of a lot of merchandise probably already has for mlw as it is this guy's got star written all over him and fought to in hammerstone i mean i could see why the fans were fantasy booking it but the fact that they teased it now for so long and are going to save it for that opportune moment damn it's good solid booking well done court bauer and i cannot wait till that matchup is executed papa smokes because it will be one of the best matchups i think of 2021 yeah, sometime this summer. We don't have too long to wait, I don't think. Yeah, it's coming up soon. So anything else you want to add to tonight's episode? No, I don't think so, but that was another good one. They, they're they uh, they're pushing the stars they need to push. The matches are good. The booking is good, and I continue to enjoy MLW. It, it'll be a bit um, sad when they're shut down, but 
uh, for the, you know, the end of the season and such. But like you say, we can also use a little break. We've got some other stuff to do. We've got uh, all kinds of projects coming up on Ring Respect Radio. So we'll still be busy. And then that'll give us something to miss and look forward to uh, in the middle of the summer sometime. Yeah, you bet, man. Looking forward to it and all the projects that we have going on as well, too. And we're glad that everybody continues to support us and tune in. I mean, we've been doing this uh, for quite some time now. The two of us have been working on this project of Ring Respect Radio for about, uh, I think we're about a year and a half into this version of Ring Respect Radio anyway. And we've been doing this kind of work for years now, Pop Smokes. And kudos to everybody who continues to tune in, to listen to us and to, you know, take in what we say and value what we say at times too. And we love the engagement from the fans. So make sure to comment in the comment section below. We do frequent the comment section. We do get back to you guys. We want to talk to you. want to chat wrestling. So reach out. We're just a couple of bros looking to talk about some wrestling. So reach out to Papa Smokes and myself anytime. And thank you for tuning in again. Make sure to check out us on uh, Backbreaker Media as well. And make sure you subscribe as always. We'll see you next time. Thanks for coming. Dark, cold world out there. There's a time to live and a time for a man to die. There are places for dead men in the earth and the sky. Don't you venture too far now, cause you can't come back. From the place where the good guys always dress in black. When you go to the old saloon, dead south end Gonna find you a man there Wants to be your friend If you dare to deny his wish You'll be dead by dawn So give him a drink and a smile And then move right on Rednecks with white faces Don't go putting on down